Hello everybody, Paul from Cryonetic here. In today's video, we'll be creating this concrete barrier and we'll be importing it into Unreal Engine 4. We use Blender and GIMP and some photo references that we, that we took as long as some photograph textures. And then I'll show you how to create your own model like this. You can see there, it's got its own little gash in there as well. And just adds to some of the detail of this model. So if you guys uh, want to create one like this yourself, stay tuned. And a quick note, um, I have opened a Patreon account. I am asking for some support. I would like to do these videos full time. Um, so if uh, anyone out there believes that I'm doing some good work, um, check the links below. Check the link on the video. I should pop it up on the right at the current moment. Um, support me. Uh, like my video, subscribe, and then I can continue creating content like this and continue helping you to create your games. Alright, that's enough of me rambling. Uh, let's get on to creating this um, concrete barrier. Alright, let's get started. First things first, I just want to show you guys um, the reference I'm working off of. It's over here. It's uh, just taken from a construction site. Um, you can see the concrete block sizes. I judged this was about three meters and it's just over a meter tall. That's probably a little bit smaller, about I would say about 70 or 80 centimeters. But for simplicity's sake, my model is not going to be exactly to this. I'm just using it as a size reference. So let's close out of here. And then I'll just show you that I took photographs of the concrete texture that I'm going to use and then just a couple of damaged wall pieces that I want to use and maybe some stains. It all really depends on what you want to do to your model. Let's jump over to Blender. I'm going to jump into the front view and then into orthographic view and then shift A we're going to add a cube mesh and now you see the sizes here on the side it's two by two by two. So tab going to edit mode deselect everything and then Z to go into wireframe mode. So select these bottom um, faces by or vertices by holding control and left mouse and then just holding control again just drag them up. Now we did say this is a little bit taller than a meter so let's make it just 1.1 because these big blocks here are about a meter and these little blocks here they're about a, uh, 10 centimeters. So you can see this is already two meters wide. So we select this side, and just scroll it out a little bit or drag it out a little bit more. And then you'll see that the sizes we have 1.1 meters by three meters by two meters. So I want to bring that down. That's the side view to, I want to bring that down to just one meter. Then quickly what we're going to do is we're going to select these top uh, vertices and we're going to scale them in. Now we're going to scale on the Y axis because if you don't scale on the Y axis, it scales like this and then everything gets smaller on every side. So what we're going to do is you're going to hit S and Y, then you're going to hold control so it snaps to the grid and then we're going to scale this in. Those four blocks, that's about 40 centimeters. That's pretty okay. And then you see it only scaled on the Y axis. Then we're going to add a loop cut. So hitting control R add a loop cut you can just click to add it anywhere and hit G and hold control to bring it down and then we're going to scale this in also on the y-axis so that it's just a little bit bigger than that side over there so that is the basic block out ready just one more thing I want to add I want to bevel the sides now, beveling will make it a, look a little bit more smooth. So, to show you what I mean, I'm going to select all the edges around here. Easy way to do that is, if it's multiple edges, just hold control and it will select everything on that path. But because it's not many being made yet, it's not really necessary. So, then you can just hold shift and click. Select all of those. These two top ones. And then all of these over here. The reason why I'm selecting all of them at the same time is because I want the bevel to be roughly about the same size. If you bevel each of them you kind of can judge it by eye or hold control, snap the grid, but it's best for me to do everything at once so I can 
get them the same sizes. All right, let's see. So just hit Control B. Oh, that's a bit much. Oh, I shouldn't have selected these bottom ones. My apologies. So let's try again. No, wait, I should. Hmm. Let's try it again. Ah, okay. That's a little bit better. Just drag it out until you're happy. So just to recap, I was supposed to select these bottom ones. I just had a bit of a brain freeze there at the moment. Okay, so that is your basic block out. Now we are going to use this. So we're going to call this the low poly. And then we're going to hit shift D to duplicate it. And then you're going to hit M and it says move to layer and we're going to move a piece to the second layer. And we're going to call the second piece the high poly. So you'll see here at the bottom is your layer tab. So if you click over, it might look like we're going, we're not doing anything, but because we're moving to a different layer, um, that's where that model that we moved is. And that's why it's visible. So let's quickly, I want to set this up for sculpting. So what I want to do is just add a little bit more detail. Um, if you use dynamic topology, yes, it will automatically add details, or you can use subdivision surfaces to add more detail. But to start off with a higher detail model, I find works better because then it doesn't have to add a, a lot more sculpting detail to it, especially if you use dynamic topology. So what we're going to do with this model, we're going to jump into the front view, we're going to hit Control R and add loop cuts and use the mouse wheel to go up. So we want something that will look a little bit more square. So I'm going to add, just by judging my eye, as many as what I can, or as many as I believe would be necessary. And then over here as well. So you want them to get almost a square look. That seems okay, that's not too bad. And then here at the bottom as well. And then in the middle, do exactly the same thing. So I would say our model is now pretty ready to start sculpting, but first I want to subdivide it a little bit more. You might think this is a little bit crazy, but I want the model to be as high as okay, over a hundred faces. You see if you're not into in edit mode it won't run slow, but if you're in edit mode it will be horrendously slow. Once again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I am going to use dy dynamic topology and I don't want dynamic topology to add the details in because in some t cases it will add them in wrong. It will, the model will take a lot more clean up to try and get it to look properly and it just, it's just nasty. So um, let's go with this method. I'm going to hit smooth shading here. And then I'm going to jump into sculpt mode. And then here, by dynamic topology, you're going to enable that. Now, one thing I just quickly also want to show you guys is that if you go to, and there's the shortcut, Control D. If you go into object mode and just quickly look at something like, oh, okay, and you go back into sculpt mode, dynamic topology gets disabled. So you need to re-enable it every single time you jump into, uh, in and out of object mode or edit mode. That is just, um, it's, it's not a, bug or anything like that it's just um uh, annoying i would say so you uh, will get that sometimes if you've done a sculpt for quite some time and it starts disabling it you just get very frustrated and annoyed and we're going to change this from subdivide collapse to just subdivide edges relative details fines check smooth shading and then here at symmetry lock we're going to disable that and then before I do anything, so it doesn't matter what brush you're on, you just hold shift and left mouse click to smooth out these because I do have kind of sharp edges and I don't want them to have, not for the sculpt anyway. There we go. JBR. I think I got all the edges now. Just do maybe that a little bit. 
all right I'm happy so we're going to start using the clay strip brush and then I want a broken edge here so holding control and the clay strip brush control would will take detail away not holding control will add detail you see there it's adding detail so holding control it takes detail away I'm just sculpting on this corner clicking um, will add a bit more detail if um, instead of just holding the mouse in there we go I'm starting to look pretty good can zoom in a little bit more and then use smaller just to add a bit more detail you can also use the crease brush to add in cuts or little dents uh, but I don't think that would be necessary okay that looks pretty good I'm going to do the same thing over here in the middle we're just going to go like ah oh, let's just take this part away As you can see, dynamic topology hasn't really added much detail because we already had some detail to work with. I'm probably going to add a bit more now, now but uh, or in a moment, but uh, that's not necessary. All right, when you're doing the edges, it's best to alternate between just taking detail away and then holding shift to smooth until it looks the way you want it to look because sometimes uh, you might get like weird corners so to avoid that smooth them out so might have been a bit too much on my side there but I think I can manage I can fix it. There we go. Okay. So, I'm just going to keep on doing this. Um, I'm going to skip this part of the video. Uh, it's mainly tedious and just repetition. Uh, but as you can see, I just added that detail, added that. Those are the two main details that I wanted to add. Um, and so now it's up to you what other details you want to add to your model. You can stay tuned and just watch the time lapse of me finishing this up. And um, then I'll see you in a second. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, just, I subdivide smoothed at one point, uh, which added some strange artifacts. So watch out for that, just as a warning. Um, not the highest detail model, but I think at this moment I'm just going to fool around more than anything else. So I want to get on with the tutorial. So now what I'm going to show you guys is how to Retopologize this because I have it at about 1.2 million triangles and I want this down to uh, I would say no more than three or four hundred. So we're going to jump, oh wait, yeah, we're going to jump into object mode. We're going to move this one back to the first layer and jump over to the first layer and then you see that it's overlaid onto our other model. So just right click and make sure you select your low poly. See there it's selected. I just want to smooth shade it first. And then I'm going to add a modifier and the modifier is called the shrink wrap modifier. We're going to set a target as the high poly. Then you see immediately you started doing some changes and everything. I'm going to jump into edit mode and then I'm just going to add details where I believe it requires details. So what I mean by that is hit control, 
to model with control R and then just add some loop cuts until everything starts looking a bit more a little bit better so. it's just mainly these big gashes that I want to make sure that they look they look good um, the smaller ones not that um, big of a deal let's jump yeah, it looks pretty good and you go into this one got that gash over there so would that be enough detail I don't believe so let's get this I want that gash to be equally as prominent That looks pretty good. I just want to see something. What happens if I add? It doesn't really make much of a difference. Then I'm just going to go into object mode and click apply. And if you hide your high poly mesh, you'll see that oh, you got a low detail mesh here. It kind of looks a little bit warped and funky. I'm not too sure if that corner is going to look proper. So let me just swing that modifier back on. And with even if the model is um, hidden, it will still be um, you'll still be able to add details to it, so, or still be able to use it as reference. Oh, this is where I made a mistake. I should have added a cut over there and another one about over there. Okay, I believe now we're done looks a little bit weird but we can always fix that so now just to give you an idea the low poly we worked on uh, why am I jumping to edit mode the low poly we worked on uh, now let's just see this hit it like that is roughly about 600 triangles that's okay for what we're going to do. We don't really need to fix up anything else. Um, I can show you how to just quickly how to reduce the detail if you really, really find that um, your model didn't come out all that nicely. I'm just going to move some of these around here because I want to get them to be a bit more of an even size. If they're so bunched up, they um, cause problems when uh, shadows are involved or anything like that so I think that was for a gash yes it's for a gash so uh, in order in uh, one way to start um, reducing detail would be to like select a bunch of faces or vertices hit X and then just um, say edge loops and then it will start collapsing the edge loops and you'll see that the detail will start there I say six faces now it is a time-consuming process, so I'm going to skip it for this video because I do believe this is low poly enough for, for a game engine. But you can probably push this down to about two, three hundred faces easily with all these details still intact. Um, and there would be no real, real issue or difference between this version and the other one that you would, you would make um, yourself. So let's see. I don't see any more vertices that are too close together all right so this is now end of uh, this part and um, stay tuned the next part uh, will be covering uv mapping and normal map baking and texturing and then import it obviously into unreal engine 4 okay stay tuned i'll see you in the next video